with a spectacular performance from Mesa Gaming. Aspire are knocked out of the tournament. And now we will see the victors facing off against RBL. But Harry, what a spectacular series that who, was. Yeah, who would have expected it? You know, both of us did say that Aspire should be taking it. You know, I know Dan gave a cheeky little free. I said it's going to go either way, maybe to map four or five. But it didn't. It was only three maps. And it was unbelievable how well Mazer did. I said it before and I'll say it again. It was going to depend on how strong Fusion was going to be transitioning back to offline, but how Flames and Havoc will do against the top three teams. And they've proved themselves completely, 100%. Like Havoc had a fantastic first game, contributing to 74 kills, 40 assists, and Flames did the best on Heretic TS as well. But it's the first game type, you know, they had a strong lead, it's turned to a tie, kind of got a bit too comfortable and managed to get that third capture in sudden death. The second game, they had a very strong lead again, but almost let go of it towards the end, just due to the fact that they kind of segregated the spawns quite a lot. That's on the side of a spy, which is why they lost, but they were trapped on card throughout most of that game, and it was very, very hard for them to make any kind of comeback. So. I kind of felt like they felt short at the start every single time, but with game number three, this was the big one. They had, with Mesa side, such a strong leader. They had full map control, all the weapons, but not only that, they were milking the time from the get-go straight away. They sent the first player straight to the bottom hill with map control, and when you got players like Snakey doing his job with the rocket, just abusing them as much as he could, there was nothing stopping these guys. But all I can say for Aspire, they did make it close at certain points, especially towards the very end, but it just wasn't enough. And I did mention before that even though you've got all these great tacticians and IGLs with that mass wealth of knowledge, you've got to execute that at a great speed, but it just wasn't there. No, exactly. Was there anybody in particular, I mean, we're seeing Snakey among a lot of these replays and he was speaking to Harry after the game. He looked pretty spectacular in that. Yeah, I think every single player played their role. Normally I'll be like, oh, this person or this person, but I was quite surprised. Every single person and stepped up and they needed to in this series. If they didn't, then there would have been some serious issues. I said it before, Havoc and Flames, I expected them to step up in some way. I didn't know if they could, but they really did. They were, you know, Havoc was giving it the bigger most of the time, you know, really trying to step things up for his team as well as himself. And normally when you're shot calling quite a lot, you do sacrifice your fragging ability sometimes. Yeah. And even saw then, Fusion with a killing frenzy to add insult to injury. It was quite tough. Well, thank you very much that, Harry. And of course, we are joined by a very special guest. And of course, Mike Bembenek, AKA Smiley Moss. And he is uh, the mind behind the machine that is uh, this uh, Halo Ignite. It was, it was your tweet that started the whole thing off, right? Not the mind behind the machine, <laughs> I wouldn't say that. But yes, um, it, I mean, October last year, um, you know, we saw what was kind of going on with HCS and Halo 5. and. Um, you know, in terms of just kind of the Halo scene, there's a lot of players kind of just, you know, getting older and leaving and having to, you know, make life choices, yeah. ultimately. So, you know, ultimately, I thought, you know, what would be cool is to try to do something with Halo 3. And, um, you know, right at that time, it just worked out, you know, extremely well that the community was hungry for something like that in Europe. And um, also, um, our friends at 343 and Microsoft were extremely supportive. They reached out to me and uh, to face it. And here we are now. Mike, you know? did you see the tweet up on the screen there from you? What started it all off? It must be pretty, uh, pretty spectacular to see it all kind of come no, together. No, it's really cool. It's been pretty neat. And I mean, you know, ultimately, I got my start really in terms of the community side of esports, as Harry knows very well, um, through through Halo 3. And, um, you know, I started as a commentator. And the first, you know, big events I commentated, Harry was a player. Um, like 16 years old, 17 years old? Uh, was, yeah, you know, I think seven, about 17, 18, seven, something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was like 12 years ago at I least. I was having so, a chat yeah. with, 19, 18, with yeah. Dan, actually, and he was saying he met you when he was 14, which is pretty there crazy. There you go, Dan <laughs> Gaskin. 14-year-old yeah, yeah. Dan Gaskin. <laughs> and I pretty hung amazing. out, yeah. So, um, yeah, I was really heavily involved with not just the, um, with X League, which was the job I had at the time um, with Halo, but then also... You know, started getting asked to do bigger and bigger events. So things like World Cyber Games, I Series, um, you know, the things that kind of drive the communities. You know, not just Halo, but you know, throughout Europe, um, smaller events. So having experienced those events and worked on and so many, probably you know, 15 of them over a 10-year period, and then you know, moved to face it, where you know, producing you know the major ECS, uh, you know, really heavily uh, Counter Strike stuff, yeah, bit of Rocket League. Um, so to be able to do this with Halo, it's yeah. been really exciting. It's something fresh and new, even though it's been a decade. Yeah, I mean, it's so different to what, I mean, the events I've done with Face It. It's so much more focused on the community, the fact that it's an open. We're seeing a lot of legendary names, a lot of new names. It must be pretty exciting to see all of these guys come together and be playing again. Well, I think it's really cool in terms of the Mazer story, 
you know, we're seeing unfold because, um, you know, Fusion's a player that hasn't really played for about three years. You know, he's probably a good poster boy for what I saw in the community in terms of players who real life was starting to call and, you know, the esports side of, you know, the, the game just wasn't quite there to make a living from, especially from a European side. Um, you know, RBL in terms of that lineup and they're the, the boys in terms of the Halo 5 and Guardians and things like that. And they're kind of run into this is uh, a, you know, much uh, more recent story, right? They've got kind of um, the straight ripping, you know, side to them. And now they've been picked up by RBL. So it's been pretty cool, yeah. right? Seeing all these different players come together. It's pretty amazing. And we're going to be seeing RBL in our next game. Mike's going to be joining us for the uh, analysis. We're going to be heading into Mesa Gaming versus RBL Esports. A rematch. We saw them playing earlier on. Do you think anything's going to be different this time around, Harry? Well, this is another time where it's going to really depend on the game type. So because, you know, we saw some very close ones here and there, but you always felt like Mesa in a couple of the games were delaying the inevitable to a certain extent. And I don't like using that phrase because you kind of like see it happen when on the defense quite a lot especially on ctf you kind of know it's going to happen it's just a matter of how and when and what's going to happen and how it's going to be done about it but this time i think they've learned from their mistakes that 3 -0 against aspire has given a lot of you know momentum and morale boost everything they need all the pieces to the puzzle they know they've got the players but can they actually deliver yeah well and the winner of this uh it, they're not done yet they're going to have to go up and face the goliath of tox which is uh, definitely going to be a challenge but let's take a look at the maps for our penultimate uh, best of five coming up tonight. We've got, uh, actually, interesting enough, we were all watching uh, the Guardian of All game earlier in this, uh, the previous uh, matchup with uh, Mesa and RVL, and that was uh, literally went down to the wire, right? I mean, the whole, that, you know, I've, we were talking before we went live, and there's been a lot of best of, you know, in terms of best of fives, there's been a lot of just three mappers, but they've been really close in thrillers, but out of all the games, this one, you know, previously went to four maps, that oddball guardian game was ridiculous last second you know um you know mazer you I couldn't see. put a, you know basically couldn't pull the whole map you know yeah. the the win out the bag but now they're looking strong in terms of um you know kind of the performances that they're putting together and i think in terms of a lineup and their communication that's really what we have to see from them yeah 100 percent. and well we're going to be moving into this one very quickly they want to get this match started mike what are you predicting for this game i'm i'm gonna go mazer I'm going to go Ooh. with, yeah, I'm going to go, yeah, I knew you guys would be surprised by that. But, you know, looking at that last game that they just played, um, they did look really strong, and especially when it comes to a really close CTF on Construct that we saw. Um, you know, they, they were in a situation where they were probably going to lose, and they made a pretty big mistake, and they got, you know, quite fortunate with the lack of an overshield coming up. So um, if we see more of that kind of, you know, momentum in terms of uh, their setups, then Mazer. This is my chance not to work with Mike again. I'm going to have to disagree. <laughs> so basically, all I'm going to say is that it depends, really. It could go either way, but RBL, I just feel, are just too strong. That first yeah. game type, you know, RBL destroyed them last time on now at CTF. It was very clean. <laughs> but even with Amp TS, it could have gone either way. So you've got two or three game types where it could have gone either way. And that's why I could have felt like it's a bit of a tough matchup. The games yeah. are very similar. But the only thing I can say is they're going to feel a lot... But they seem a lot more comfortable, a lot more pumped now compared to when they last played them. So after that Aspire match, I think they feel, you know, a little bit inspired going into this. But it'll be closer, but I think RBL will still take it 3-1 or maybe 3-2. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Mike, for joining us no up worries. on the desk. Casters, let's see what you're thinking for this game. Thank you very much indeed, for a Yes, I'll tell you what I do think about this game. It's going to be pretty close. This should come down to the wire. Yes, we have seen this series already unfold before our eyes, but I feel now that Mesa is well and truly warmed up. They're going to be pumped. They're going to have the momentum. They're going to be feeling good about themselves, but... RBL are a team that we know they're not going to be phased by that. They don't care how the other team is feeling. They're just going to be focusing on trying to get back into those grand finals so they can get another stab at Tox Gaming. Because ultimately, that's what they're here for. They think they're the best European team, and they want to prove that. Yep, and that's exactly what they need to do. Prove it, they will try. So the interesting point is that when you look at uh, the double-edged blade here, or the two sides of the coin, you have one team that's coming off of a big loss. Yes, okay, you can argue that Mazer's already lost to RBL in a certain circumstance, but that will do so much for your mindset. I mean, going, taking down a team, Jimbo's team, for example, 
Yeah, they, they did qualify for this, and they have beat them, and Jimbo's team may have not looked so strong in the qualifiers coming through, but still, coming off the back of the win against a team that's coming off the back of the loss could be good for the mentality side of it. Definitely, and you'd be expecting them to carry their momentum into this game, but at the same time, if RBL can shut them down immediately in the opening map here, all that momentum is for nothing, and you'd imagine that they would then struggle in the rest of the series. So this is a really big game to start with, and I think it's important that we started on narrow CTF for RBL, because it means they've got a sniper rifle to work with. It means sniper Joe can start going off, and he's already taken some faces. Up and over we go. Flames will transfer with the Rockets, but unfortunately is spotted out. The call out comes through, and instantly just melted as he flies through the air. Respectful top mid. Feed the information back to the rest of the roster. As you can see both players simultaneously going head to head. Speaking ahead, Flames loses his, looking for the spawners just by the man cannon. Heads down low and opts to not do it. One bullet left in the clip. We'll see what he can do. Even if it's a body shot, he can tank it up and switch to the BR and go for the initial kill. His teammates have just fallen down. The body shot is there. Instantly, respectfully, you can see his teammate has fallen down, so he needs to be very aware that he is on his own here. Killing spree, toe to boot, but he has got support. I can see the BR lines of fire from behind. They do lose two back-to-back -back down. Yeah, good pressure from RBO early on, but they weren't able to pull a flag just yet. But as I say that, uh, Moses is starting to run it, and he does have support from top middle. So if he can actually get past this little barrier here, he should be able to be home and drive, and unfortunately not able to throw it far enough. But he might be able to train at home if they can pick up a couple of kills here, RBL. Hollis tries to get his shields back, but unfortunately is spotted, but nevertheless, the flag is put in. Initial up, not going from RBL. Snipe drone gets the job done. No more snipes in the bag, but it doesn't matter whatsoever. This is an objective game type. We spoke about this earlier on. We saw players going hardcore on the slayers and the frags, but ultimately, it is an objective, and you need to get that bad boy moving. Narrow CTF, it's a good opener for these two rosters. Respectful, takes the challenge. Not a problem whatsoever. Easy one for Fusion. And I will say this, in the latter round, in the late, in the in the game before this, Dan, Fusion looked well and truly co confident and rolling back the years as if it never left. Fusion was going off, he had a killing frenzy in that uh, final Construct game that we were watching as well, and it really was uh, a blast from the past. But whether he can do it now against RBL, uh, arguably the best European side, and will remain to be seen as another flag is being moved and Respectful's got good eyes on Man Cannon as well. So they should be able to get this flag a considerable distance and then track back and probably help the flag go in potentially. But there may have been a return here. And the flag's actually been pulled as well. So good response uh, from Mazer Gaming to stop it. But now with the flag moving yet again, is anyone in position? It was a bit of a bait and switch. Wish the shot but his teammates there to follow up and that's absolutely fine. Two players up close and personal. They didn't expect this flag carrier to go down. It looks like someone transferred on the man cannon did manage to get into enemy territory, but it doesn't matter whatsoever. Snipe drone gets its second cap. Things starting to spiral a little bit out of control. It'd be interesting to see after this if the stats tell the same story. Call for supports there. Fusion again picks up and is taken down. Excuse me, doesn't pick one up. Ball has actually picked him up. Straight across the opposing side. Reticle runs red. And so do the rivers with blood, snaky fall, so does Havoc. This is looking all kinds of bad down. Yeah, I mean, we're mainly focusing on Snipe Drone because he has the sniper rifle and he is playing phenomenally at the moment. He's getting snipes, he's also moving in the right areas in the maps, and he's been scoring the flags. He's not been scared to pick it up, and it looks like this could be the final flag. If they can get over this final hill, no, they can't. That's going to be all four dead. Mazer should get a return, uh, unless RBL can quickly off spawn, do something about it. It's all going to be down to fusion with these grenades to, to stop and get this return. There is support though, and they didn't overcommit to it, and that's fine. Snakey looking for the spawners, you can already hear the man cannon, so they are on way. Tried to get the initial kill, as he was tanked up, but the shot didn't hit the target. Flames over enemy territory, Snakey's there for the support, that's a two players here as well, I see Fusion just dipping down below. Snakey on the reposition, I'm okay with this. No point in dying just yet, try and give some support from afar, you can get the distance, you can read the information. You'll be as tunnel vision, so you might actually get a bigger picture here. Back of the head. Snipe drone, he's down, he's dead. Second player will fall, goes for the second, gets the body, takes him down. Most trying to hide in the rafters. This will be a one shot round the corner. Easy kill, easy cleanup. Three down now. A little bit slow on the offensive side of it, Danks. Now they can't run this because they're spawning directly in the back. One, two, three members. They've shut that down. Yeah, spawning on the flag, unfortunately. They just weren't ready for it. But these are the plays we need. We need to see some individual. Some individuals stepping up here for Mesa Gaming, getting those doubles, getting those triples, because that will then allow them to actually push up 
and potentially get their first flag on the board. But at the moment, RBL have done very well defensively. When they are on the back foot, they retreat into the right places, making it very tough for Mazer to actually pull a flag in those right areas. The wind just blowing at the distance. Can't be for the storm. Initial picks opened up with the snipe off. You see it time and time again on Narrows. It is one of the very few maps with the dual snipe system, especially such an elongated map as well. Goes oh. through the sky! And he's dead. What a shot from Snakey. Two down, flags on the pull. But where is the rest of the roster? Unfortunately, Dan, there's only two of them alive, but that's a good shot. Second one's to boot. Whips to the BR. Snakey is doing work, but his teammates, unfortunately, are falling around him. Yeah, if he can uh, step up individually, as he has been for the past, like, three minutes, and the rest of his teammates can actually join him on some of these attacks, they should be able to get a flag at least halfway across the map, and then it's just whether they can actually stop those spawners and get those traps. Uh, accordingly, but that's what you need. You need to have those players hitting those shots. And now it's up to Fusion, who's got the sniper rifle, to do exactly what Snakey did to try and support this flag run from Flames. Bit of a confidence boost when you have a small spree like that. I'm a big fan. Keep going with the Slayers, keep trucking and tanking them. However, eventually you do have to go for that objective. That's the name of the game. Off the respawn we go, initially. Respectful, hop on board on the opposing side, RBL. Kind of on the back foot here, but certainly in the lead. Two flags to nil, checking the base, making sure he's clear from behind. Fusion down low, have to deal with this. The two of them are taking him down, he's already got one. Flames is there on the follow-up as well, so they might not know this with the rockets. It should have been called out. Three down now, sniped drone, last alive. And the reason they were on the back foot for quite a while is because both snipers were in the hand of Mazer Gaming and RBL were just really struggling to get out of their base. Rockets now in the hand of Flames as well, and you can see uh -oh. he's not quite sure where to be taking this flag. Ideally, he doesn't want the flag, but even with Rockets in his back pocket, he's going to be more than happy to run this one because he's got the support from top middle. And this is going to be 2-1, and Mazer right back into it. I like it. I like it a lot. Fusion with the double. Player opposing. Won't be the triple time will run out. I'm surprised there's no grenade there. I'm not because he doesn't have any in his pocket, but he's ready to receive. Snipe drone will at least clean up for now. Trade-off goes through. Snakey holds his trigger all but a second. Goes for hollows, but the BR is too strong. Forces him back. This engagement now has to continue forward. Three players are committed to the cause. You have to go for him. That's why triple kill comes through from Flames. Doesn't actually grab the flag. That's twice he's missed it. Didn't back up for a second. This will slow them down and unfortunately lead to his death. That's a bit of a fumble. Probably would have got caught by the grenade anyway, but we need to see cleaner pickups on these flags. Uh, you'd expect four. after this time and playing Halo for so long, we wouldn't see as many fumbles as we have this tournament, but that's what pressure can do to you. Sometimes your fingers get a little bit slippy and they don't hit the buttons that you expect them to hit. Fusion's been a bugger here and causing him all kinds of problems. Yes, Snipe Drone does get the reset, but he's individually killed them all. They've all gone down. That's a full slay. And now you need to pray that you do have your backside covered. Goes for the respawn as Snipe Drone does not expect it. He does get the kill at least, and thankfully that was because Fusion was tanked up when taking the engagement initially. Respectful, looking over the edge. Sees one player, will call that out. Doesn't engage just yet, that's fine. Now he does. Fusion dips down low, this should be his death. Brandon has whiffed this. Will he get forward? No, he does not. But enough to at least reduce the shields and have have a clean up. Flames again, unfortunately, instantly just melted. Snakey back on him, sniper POV. If Mazer can keep the sniper rifle out of the hands of Snipe Drone, they have a definite chance of actually winning this game. Because ever since they haven't been having to face that and it's just been a pure BR battle and the sniper rifles of their own, they've done very well. And they've managed to get back into this game. Snakey needs to stay alive. But Snakey's been hitting some sick shots with this sniper rifle as well. So I, I just advise them, well, I'm not going to be able to advise them, but I'd hope that they're going to be able to keep that sniper away from Snipe Drone's hands. Four in the clip, two in reserve, six bullets still to work with. He's whiffed a few now. He had a good spree earlier on, so we know what he is capable of, but at the moment, he's just shooting the air. Speaking of air, death from above goes flying through the air. Fusion's there. Respectful, we'll see him at least, so there'll be a refrag. The trade off is real, as most does go down. Needs to be where his teammate is engaged directly above him. Hollers does at least get the kill. Fresh rockets are there. Now he can push in, be aggressive. Let's see what he can do. There's one. Took two rockets to kill him, could have gone for the BR, but opts to go for the kill instead. That's fine. Make sure you do work with these other two. That's better. Switches out, kills himself. I'm okay with it. You deny any kind of rockets that go across to the enemy. Yeah, wanted to make sure that those power weapons weren't going to transfer over. But with five minutes left, I think Mazer Gaming have put themselves in a fantastic position to get back into this game. Now, uh, RBL, even though they've got a little bit of top middle control, it's been the pushes through lobby that have so successfully got Mazer back into this game. 
Uh, you can clearly tell they're communicating successfully and pulling the flag at the right times. But as I say, that RBL have just pulled a flag. There's a couple of players out of position here, so there's always a chance this could be the final cap. He is ringing underneath. Hollers and crew keep them dead to rights, keep them pinned in the base, or the flag carrier keeps on going. Respectful picks up Snipe as well, but I don't think it's going to do too much altogether. In we go, secured, signed, sealed, delivered, job done. Well received. 3-1 to one will be the final score of game number one on Narrows CTF. As soon as that sniper got back in the hands of RBL, they were just able to generate enough pressure whereby, unfortunately for their opposition of Mesa, they just couldn't get out of their base quick enough to stop that flagpole. Uh, I think that's the clear difference between these two sides at the moment, is just the efficiency of the objective work. Uh, whether that will carry on through to the series, that remains to be seen. As we look at the statistics, um, decent game for Snipe Drone, as I would expect on any map with any sniper. 12 and 19, excuse me, 12 and 17, but 19 assists for Hollow, so it doesn't matter regardless, the assists were definitely there. 21 kills individually for three players on the side. Red team, Mesa Gaming, a little bit of a, a lackluster performance, but there were signs of life, and you can see that things are starting to unfold. Fusion is now well and truly in the zone and off the leash. Snakey hits some Perla shots, to be fair, but I like what you touched on. No one really, at the times when he were doing it, there was no response from the rest of his roster. There was no support to help him out and continue. The damage that he was doing was impactful on the actual game, but there's no one to support and make use of the impactfulness. You know, if you're doing something, you need to make sure that your team can be there to help you out and to follow up with it. It's all right getting four down, but if three of your teammates are dead, what can you do as a lone soldier? Yeah, and most of the times it was because Snakey was hitting the shots after his teammates had died already. So then there was just, he was just delaying the inevitable, really. He was surviving, which is great because going clutch in those moments means that you're not going to be losing the game. Uh, but he wasn't able to do them in the moments where he actually had teammates around them. And that's mainly just because RBL were pressuring the sniper rifle at the right times when they were all alive and spawned on the map. As we look at some of the highlights, you can see Snakey did have uh, a fairly nice time with the sniper rifle. And if he can do that again later when they're on Guardian Oddball, when there's only one sniper on the map, then there's always an opportunity that it can be a big influence and, and make a big difference in the game. I remember the previous round, this was a pillar of a shot. Woo. Doesn't even lean, it just snaps to his head. Fusion being fusion as per, and just a, a, an annoyance. You let him off the leash in your base and he will do so much damage. But again, individual performances on a map where you have to be so on point with your communication. You need cohesion, you need teamwork to pull the flags. You can't just go pulling willy-nilly because everything will collapse beneath you. You need teamwork, you need the right time to pull, the right time to say dead flag and reset. So signs of life from individuals and signs of life from this team. We'll see if they do fare better as we move into Amplified Team Slayer. How do you think this one sits down across these two rosters? Well, I think this is a complete opposite style now to what we just saw on Narrow's flag. You talk about cohesion, you talk about uh, structure. Well, Amplified Slayer offers something a little bit different for those teams who like to adapt on the fly, who are very good at reacting to call-outs, and they are going to be performing well on this. I think Mazer Gaming should thrive in a scenario like this, but at the same time, when you're going up against the likes of Moe's, the likes of Respectful, they were born and they were bred on maps like this. It's basically a free-for-all map at times. We'll see how it does set the score. Certainly have a confusion. This could be a good time for them to step up and force Mesa Gaming to step out. Two players locked into the corner just above B site. Grenades go down. No damage actually done yet. They'll be impactful enough to keep locking them down and put them here where you do have one player below them as they spawn off the side. Expect quite a lot of back and forth. Again, it is a respawn type game, but still this map there are so many angles that you just get shut down it's, it's, a, it's always a really quick game type right because it, it's over before it even starts it's very hard to survive on this game type sometimes you want to just get into a base or down through bottom middle and that can be the art of amplify slayer is rather than being one who can pick up the kills it's being one who can escape because if you do escape your opponents are going to be distracted and they're going to be focusing on something else and then it allows your teammates to pick up those kills as a big double Brandon. Well, we construct and we can build as many storylines as possible on this map, but it is a little bit hectic. So rather than listen to us waffle on, we'll actually dive in with an astro listening and listen to how RBL's teamwork is going down. Okay. 
I've got one. 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 I've Mike, I'm here with you though. Alright. I'm gonna spawn gold. Two bombs, 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 two Two blue gold, one square, right, top gold now. Go yeah, guy, go on top P as well. Yeah, top P, top P. Wait, metal boys. I don't want to push gold. I'm gonna push gold. P if I can. Uh, that gold we is gold. Gold. I'm gold. Gold. I'm going from gold. I'm going from gold. I'm going from gold. I'm going I'm playing couch, I'm playing couch. P tower weak, I count. We'll check gold. Watch your P tower. I don't see this guy. One shot. That's it. That couch, check out. Check out, check out. Go on, weak, weak the couch. I love P, love P after that. P2, 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 P
Mazer, is there any way of getting back in? Well, there's always a way of getting back into it, but is there any kind of saving grace that you can take from this one? Uh, the saving grace would be this was the game type that Mazer won when they faced each other in the previous series. It was the one that went down right to the last second, and they only won by one point. Uh, I think that RBL would probably have learned from that, and I'd expect them to perform a little bit better going into this game three, and it's whether Mazer are going to have the momentum now that we were talking about earlier, because uh, you might feel a little bit deflated when you go 2-0 down in a series against a team that you probably know is a little bit better. You start to have those those thoughts creep into the back of your mind of, OK, well, we're taking third place here. We're probably not going to be able to move on to the grand final. As much as people will say, oh, I never think about that, it always happens. You're always going to have those thoughts of, how do I react when I lose? Am I going to fist bump the other guy? Am I going to shake the hand? Why am I going to think later? What am I going to think when I'm driving home? They just creep into your head. That's what brains do. We are human at the end of the day. But you never know. If they can get a nice early start on Guardian Ball here, get a big chunk and a big lead and maybe a nice setup, that might just give them uh, the opposite. It might give them enough belief that they can actually get back into the series. Here we go then. The last chance to dance ball, for Mazer Gaming. Ball. This is do or die. They now need to pull the reverse sweep in order to make it to the grand finals. Because after this one, that's all we've got left. Snake initially calling out the players up on Snipe Tower. Hollers is shut down. Fusion knows there's one over lurking around here. It's going to be Sniper, and that's some good support. He should not have won that battle. He should have been dead. All the way on the opposing side of Camo. He gets the help that he needs. And now with the sniper rifle, Fusion is just going to be hoping that he can protect this ball. But unfortunately, his teammates don't have the ball. He's kind of stuck on his own at Snipe Tower. So he's now going to be thinking, all right, well, if I hold down the Snipe Tower, that's going to either force the ball to do one of two things. He's going to either have to move over to gold, and then they're going to be more vulnerable. Or I'm just going to have to wait and push and wait for my teammates to spawn. The ball does get chucked over towards gold. So I guess Fusion achieved of holding down the Snipe Tower, but it's just not been able to get any ball time alongside it. So it feels like a little bit of a waste. You could see what they were trying to backfill over there. Unfortunately, the final player down at green does throw the ball all the way over to Camo, which now causes problems because Mr. Finley himself is locking down Snipe's side. If they could have got the ball over here and held it elbow, they'll have had the time. But now things just get a little bit more difficult as the ball is on the opposing side back on gold. More shots like that will be very good for the team. He's missed a few so far and kind of been a bit of a wasted snipe rifle, but we shall see. We heard from RBL in the previous round quite a lot, so it's only fair to jump on board with an Astro listening on the side of Mesa Gaming. Nice. 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 Back now, back now, back now. I have to challenge Blue Door. Watch out Blue Door. Watch out Blue Door. Right, one is three. 55 on camera. One is at three. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get shit on this camera too, lads. Yeah, 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 yeah. One just left his name. And this one, this one is to corner. This oh, one is to corner. I got camo like before you know. Nice Keep on up. Come on, boys. 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 Elbow is weak, Jake. Fly over, S2. One, one SV, I'm on SV. SV, Brandon Veek. Let's go, boss. Let's take a Peter. S2, 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 SV, Brandon Veek. Nice. SV, absolute. SV, absolute. Elbow weak. 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 Go down again, Camo's dead, SP. SP and S2, SP and S2. SP and S2, sniping ball. S2, sniping ball, yeah. Can anyone get ready at left? Oh shit, blue door. Jason's born, don't care. Jason's born, he's born with us. No, it's Snape. Ah, I just messed my name much. I'm born with us, let's go. Jason's Snape, Jason's Snape. S2 face, S2 face, S2 face, sweet, Brandon. Go, 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 we have damage, we've lost. Watch your elbow, two of them, two of them, weak elbow. Green, 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 kill me, top green. He's backed up, he's backed up. He's two shots, Snape, he's watching you, he's watching you. S2 weak, Brandon. Elbow, elbow's weak. Bottom green, Jake, still weak. That's one barrels. Ball drop. Shoot S3, I'm going for the door. Shoot S3, shoot S3. Jake's one shot green still. Jake's back around, back around, sniping mine. Hey, you tag me, tag me, tag me. Mate was weak S2, he's going to be back, Snape. Back around, back around, back around, watch the mic. Absolutely back around, mic. Four, 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 time, time, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one bottom blue, that's one bottom blue. Two up, two up. Should be gold. Three and four. That's one blue. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blue door, yeah. I got, I got hit by an aid. Scan for me, scan low. I can't see low, I can't see low. Well, they finally, finally managed to crack the egg down. It took a fair amount of time and they had to commit a lot of resources to it. There were many deaths going throughout that one and they lost 46, uh, about 40 seconds of ball time while doing so, but they have at least managed to bring the ball out now from S Tower. And they've got camouflage as well now, does Fusion. And, uh, yeah, sometimes you do have to just keep trying and be persistent with trying to break that setup. And even though they did try a few times, they, they didn't lose that much ball time as a result of it, and it actually required a pretty big multi-kill from Snakey in order for them actually to break that setup, but that's what you need. Snakey was stepping up in that first game with the sniper rifle, and now he's stepping up now with a triple kill as well. With Fusion and the camouflage, though, having the ball means he can be a little bit sneaky. He's got position on the sniper tower, runs out off the camouflage, but now it just means he can hold this down, and he can watch across and make sure that there's no easy push across top middle. Hollers. We're extending just a little bit. Fully man without fear. This scenario have to be watching bottom gold for the push. It's actually coming from S3. Elbow looks to be there as well. Definitely got shot in the back, so expect someone to be flooding in from there. Missing second beat down. Moe's bouncing around. Does stay alive. Snipe drone gets the shot. The aggression was there from Snakey, but obviously when you have two players, one of them with a sniper rifle, you will be expecting to get traded on. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a waste of a push from Snakey. I would like to see him wait a little bit, wait for his teammates to respawn and then go over the man cannon because they could have at least helped him put a little bit of pressure on the sniper rifle. But because he got a couple of early shots, he was probably feeling confident in his shot. Havoc's going to now try and go over the man cannon. He's the one who's greeted by Snipe Drone, but it allowed Fusion to get across. But again, it's just not enough. That's going to be all four down for Mazer, and this is a better setup from RBL. Well, they have the ball, and they have map control. We are set up to hold down Snipe Tower for some time. Snakey tries to make the flood from below, comes in with a mauler, instantly answered and responded to. Second person steps up, the beatdown whips there. Killing spree for Snipe Drone, locking this down himself, two players individually. Tags up the last one, Holler should know. Fusion actually gets it, he'll run away free and clean. And the player bites the dust. Sniper Watch. drone. He's just showing real, oh. real composure with the sniper rifle and with, with his holding of this sniper side as well. The initiative to actually push the bottom middle after he killed the first guy who pushed into S1. It meant that he was able to actually get the double kill. Some players would have instantly turned over and looked towards blue. It didn't really happen for him. Instead, he shows why he's a sniper rifle holder. He shows that he can position himself in these areas. I mean, I've always said that when you're going to put Snipe in your name, you have to be expected to be able to get the job done. Speaking of Sniper, Havoc's just done. Well, Havoc's not leaving it, so you'd expect that to be called out now, handing over to somebody else. We shall see. Grenades go down through the respawn. I think they can pick something up. Fusion got a random lucky double earlier on. And the one as they back down from S2. One player just pops on his head, takes him down. Fusion force back now, half shields. Have to be aware of the top middle push, though. They're coming in, they're collapsing. This is good work from RBL. They want to try and shut this down and stop Mazer. It's very preemptive. Rather than just going for the play and going for the ball, it's more of a, a stop sign. Hold back, hold point. One person who doesn't is respectful. There's the snipe. Double is lingering on the side of Elbow. And now they've got the slays down. They also are gifted. Not only with the ball, but with the elbow as well, and I think they'll rotate this one. Yeah, good more ball movement from Respectful, just recognising where the spawns are going to be happening, and that's a big play from Moe's, gets a nice tag uh, onto Flames to boot, and it's just been good movement in general from RBL. Positioning themselves at the sniper side, transitioning to green when they need to, uh, even moving over to blue to apply pressure when the other team is just there spawning. So it's going to be a real struggle for Mesa to get back into this game now. I know they were able to do so, in the previous time they matched up in the series, but I think RBL would have learned from their mistakes. Large sniper here, plenty of bullets in the chamber to get the job done. Checks blue on the backside, help his teammate out. Initial one from low jump will be taken. Challenge comes from the elbow side, opts for the BR, getting a little bit over aggressive here, does get the kill, but the grenades will at least seal his fate. They can shut the sniper down now which removes any viewership from down on green over to the side of blue. Snapdrone's actually holding still here. 
And Flames took the bait, doesn't see him. Shimmering in the distance, gets the beat down as well. Good job from Snipe Drun. Good trigger discipline to this whole point. Snake comes around the corner, does get the kill, gets the second one as well. That's bloody good. That's a little unexpe unexpected as well, to be fair. It was interesting that Flames actually even recognized the camouflage was there. I wonder if he actually just heard it through his headphones, that one little footstep. It was allowed, allowed him to get a couple of shots off, which was able to follow the actual destruction of Snipe Drone. Otherwise, he could have ran a little bit of a riot with that camouflage. As Fusion's going to be the last one alive. He does have contact with the ball, but he can't play that ball, which means now RBL are actually going to have control of blue side here, and they have the ball over there as well. So it could be a decent chunk of time if they're able to take down that final blue player, but it looks like he's down there on blue jump. So they need to be very aware that someone is lurking in the depths, and there he is, it's Snakey. This is getting a little bit harder by every second that passes a ball time that they pick up. Good trade off from Snakey, wins the battle. Beats down respectful, so thank you very much. Now, the next focus will be Snipe Tower. Ball has been reset. The playing field is once again well and truly open. Fusion did go down, so I'm, I'm quite surprised he's jumping into this one. You'll know that there is several players over there. You've been shooting at one, your teammates dropped on the opposing side. Fresh snipes up, grenade goes down, looks for any kind of players that want to try and challenge. And now Moe's can... Oh, that's not a good grenade. Sorry, Snipe Drone. Yeah. Not well, helping him out there. He's going to rotate this sniper, he's going to play. Personally, it might have been better trying to run with that one. Yeah, maybe even just throwing it off the map. To be honest, at this point, when they've got a 90-second lead and you're going into the final four minutes. But once again, as we're seeing the tiers that we were talking about at this tournament. We had RBL losing 3-0 to Tox. We saw Mazer 3-0-ing uh, Aspire. And now we're on course for RBL to 3-0 Mazer, which it's crazy, really, that we haven't had this in these intense close games that maybe we could have just because we have these sheer disparities between differences in teams and how good they've actually been at this tournament. I honestly thought this would be a bit more of a grand finals game, if you understand what I mean. This could have been the game five. This could have been the game of the tournament. Dig it. Hey, it's a positive sign for RBL. Maybe now going into their next matchup if they win this. And they've still got to win it out. You know, nothing's over until it's over. But going into the next one against Tox Gaming, it might be a bit more of a confidence boost. Maybe they fare better. Snapdragon's try, trying to stay alive, but unfortunately isn't successful. Blue setup becomes viable. Snaky brazenly running top middle grenades there. That's a good one. No shield whatsoever. Two players individually. Second grenade doesn't find its target. He panicked a little bit. You saw the guy on the opposing side at green, so he had to bail from the engagement. Now Snipe unorthodoxly lands in the hands of Respectful. Yeah, and there's only three minutes left now, and this is starting to fall away from Mazer. It was falling away from them from the early stages, realistically. But I think if anyone is going to have a chance of taking games off Tox, I think quite rightly it's going to be RBL, so they will deserve their spot in the grand final if we don't see a miraculous comeback from Mazer Gaming. But I guess the big question on everyone's lips is, can they even take a map, let alone uh, contest for a, a potential rematch. It will go to a best of seven, and it would be another best of seven if we were to see them win that best of seven. Uh, but uh, we won't get ahead of ourselves. We'll focus on that first best of seven to begin with. One can help. Everyone loves a good old best of 14. I mean, we've seen twice, I think, in Halo 5, actual, or maybe even three times. I remember UMG, I remember the Pro League final season two. Um, we actually saw game 14s, which is wild when you think about it. Go all that way on such an even platform, even grounds. We'll focus on the game at hand for now, though. The game will soon become physically impossible to win due to the time that's left. 120 seconds on the clock. Yep, and that's just gone as well. 120 seconds behind, so that's game, set, and match, and that's why Flames has stood still as well, I think, because he knows, and the rest of the Mazer boys know, yep. their tournament has come to an end, yep. but it's RBL. They'll get the rematch that they so heavily wanted. Yeah, you see the uh, the hand sign from Snake Hip. Let's call it here. That's going to be job done. We'll wait for the full admin confirmation. There it is. GG Mazer. They end their run on Championship Sunday, which will be a top four finish. Congratulations to them. If we have console match, you might see an actual third or fourth position. But regardless, RBL, they advance to the grand finals, where they will play off once again against Tox Gaming.
Yeah, Mazer will finish in third place. You're right. We don't need any consolation because, okay. of course, that's they, they were the loser uh, bracket the final. Sweet, yeah. Losers. That's my bad. Um, it will be Aspire who finishing fourth place. And decent prize money. I mean, if we look at how people are rewarded at this tournament, especially for a European Open as well, the fact it goes right down to sixth place with that prize money. Uh, it's 25,000 uh, between the top six. is is incredible, really, to, to actually see people achieving that, even finishing in that fifth, sixth position. As we look at some of the statistics from that game, it was a fairly simple one in the grand scheme of things for the boys on RBL. And uh, a decent amount of time on the ball for Moe's, as well as some a, a lot of kills. It, it was a bit of a walk in the park. It wasn't really the contest that I, I, I think Mazer would have liked to put up, but maybe they put all of their effort into the previous loser's bracket semi. There is potential when you look at that. The ideology may have been Havoc with only nine kills and 22 deaths. Let him be the ball boy. Yep. Give him the ball and then play around him. Unfortunately, the slaying prowess, and so when you put Snipe Drone hitting 28 and 18, a nice positive 10 bomb. 17 assists as well. God, I'm just realized 22 assists coming out of Hollis also. Next, has been on fire for these last few games, but certainly good game nevertheless. I expected a little bit more. I was hoping for a little bit more. I was hoping for a game four, game five. But there's the final kill count on the board. RBL all in red, 3 to 1, 50 to 38, 214 to 82, and a slot in the grand finals awaits them. I think third slash fourth was the realistic expectation for Mesa, and the fact they were able to overturn Aspire was where their tournament actually was able to, to light up. Unfortunately, they couldn't have the matchup against RBL that maybe they expected, but it now means we get the rematch between RBL and Tox. Tox did win 3-0 uh, previously in the winner's bracket, but maybe we might see something a little bit different from RBL when they get a second bite of the cherry here. It's not as if you can go away and really review the vaults as well from last night. I mean, you can do, and you can do as much as you want, but in terms of playing up against Tox, you have just lost to them in a winner bracket final. Um, so now you've got to reset. Yes, you do get another crack at the cherry. Yes, you do have the confidence. You get to go in with a win on your shoulders. You get to go in warmed up, have a better term. But the problem is, no matter what story we can put together, no matter what physicalities in human nature we can talk about. You're going up against four of the greatest players, not only of all time, but in the game currently at present. The benefit is you get new maps and you get different maps to the ones that you've played. Of course, there, there will be some similarities. There will be some maps that will creep up again. But if you felt like there were bad maps that you've just played against Tox or you thought that Tox had some of the best game types, you can now look at some of those other game types in Halo. And you're not only matching yourselves up against the best in the world across five or even three because it was a three nil uh, game types. Instead, you get a chance to play more. Potentially, you're going to be able to play another four game types or at least another four. You could potentially be playing another seven if you go all the way. So you can really test yourselves throughout the entirety of the map rotation rather than just a few game types that they had in the winner's bracket. Yeah, the best of seven might be a little bit more forgiving. You know, if you lose, even if you pick up a, a game throughout the series, it gives you that confidence to try and back burn off of and, and move forward throughout that one. So the best of seven might actually play out in their favor, to be fair. But who knows? We, I think we're all expecting, if you're a betting man, that talk should take this pretty cleanly. I'd like to see an extension. I mean, hell, if we can, if we can take a, a second best of seven, go for it. It'd be good fun. But ultimately, I think this is a Tox game, right? I've always been a big believer of Respectful of Moe's and the teams that they've been on, that they can actually do some damage against some of the best North American teams in the world. And they have done. They've shown that. They've achieved uh, some of the best heights that we've ever seen European players achieve yep. on North American soil. But now they need to dig that little bit deeper and start taking maps off the best in the world because it's always been this hurdle they've struggled at in North America when they play the top two, top three teams. Well, that's going to be it from me and Danny G. Thank you very much for watching. Up next, we will have the grand finals. But for now, we're going to throw it down onto the floor with an interview wonder boy, I believe, has Moe's. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Moe's, looking pretty swag in his Gucci hoodie. Moe's, congratulations on the win. Uh, sum up that series for me. Obviously, Meza coming off that win against the Spire. You guys handled them pretty simply. Uh, yeah, they come out. We the first thing that we said, you know, we know we was a better team than them, but we didn't want them to come out hot, you know, hype for that series. So, yeah, we we played them. I don't think Aspire obviously had the best day, and you know, we took them very serious. And I think we played much better than our first series as well. I felt like. Are you a little disappointed in the way that that Mesa came out after beating Aspire? Were you expecting maybe a bit closer games? 
I mean, I was expecting them to come out more hot, which the Narrows game, they did come out hot. Arkel was hitting some insane sni snipes top middle, and, you know, I, I could tell they were playing really well. But I feel like we've been working the way we play, and we wanted to play our game, and obviously I feel like our teamwork, we just played better than them in general, and our teamwork done. You guys now have a repeat matchup in the grand finals against Tox Gaming. What needs to change this time around for you guys to take down Tox? I think we, we need to play the same way, really. I just feel like we just have to... We felt, we felt like when we played them, we could have won the series. I know it was a free out, but I felt like we was in the series all the games. It's more like not getting averaged as much, not making solo plays, helping each other, and, you know, just we need to play better than them. But if we play our game, I know our best can, can win this event, yeah. Awesome, most thank you so much. That's something to look for out for in the Grand Finals. Guys at home, please do not go anywhere. Do not adjust your sets, because when we come back, we will have the Grand Finals of the Face It Ignite Halo European Open.